Today, we'll be breaking down everything in Buga and Aviv's FNCS Game 1 win. There is so much we can learn from watching this, so let's get into it. FNCS just finished, so I want to watch all the game winners. Let's get into game number one here. We're not going to waste any time. We got Buga and Aviv winning game one. Let's go see how they did it. All right, so Buga and Aviv, they are landing classy courts. Let me just find them really quickly. There we go. So if you guys are new to how I do these VOD reviews and these pro level styles, we're going to go through these games as fast as we can, reasonably speaking. I'm not just going to Forex the entire thing. We want to learn as much as we can, but be efficient with it. So I'm not going to skip here and watch them do their loot route on 1x speed. We're going to go quick here and try to get as much information as fast as we can so we can all learn as fast as possible. So we do want to see how they do this game one, though. This is interesting. So they land classic courts, like I said. All right, they've got their loot route down. We're just gonna, we'll just 4x through this. It's pretty standard stuff, right? They're just gonna get their loot route down. They know where they need to go. They know where they need to do. But this FNCS was was different, right? So if you guys don't know or weren't aware, they they actually changed the way the cactus worked right before FNCS, the day before, like 24 hours before FNCS Grand Finals day one started, they changed how Cactus worked due to some bug, which we we know that ain't no bug. They did not. So it'll be really interesting to see how they adapt to that. Um, and yeah, Classy is a great spot. You can get really, really good metal here. You can get a good amount of loot. Wow, this is, this is actually, okay. So they win this game, which is nuts, right? But you would you would think that they wouldn't be going down here because you know this is opposite of the zone. But I think that the way that they changed their surge style uh, with with cactus, you know, obviously being different, is you kind of just edge tag and have to trade a lot more with with your heals. On top of all of that, they clearly don't have any DMRs, so they have to go down here for extra loot. They're they're, they're hunting for some type of scoped gun. You know, extra shield is going to be a benefit. Can't hurt. So they still don't find a DMR, which is kind of nuts. And yeah, it looks like they get some kills here coming up, but they need to find something early. They got to get something early. Got to find a DMR somehow. And I don't know who they're sneak up on. Let's see. Floodo and Statics. So also, okay. Uga and Aviv are definitely a good enough team to pick on these horrible teams around them. They know who's landing here. They know who's landing over here. They know who's, you know, they can, they can find the teams, kind of pinpoint them and say, hey, this is the team we want to fight. Like... You don't always want to be doing this, you know, back in the day, I, I really think that reverse day and marrow were like the, they like really started like just fighting through grands because that's really what they did. They just, like if you go back and watch their games, they just fought through grands. And I think before that, everyone was kind of like thinking you couldn't do it. But yeah, I mean, they, they, they're just probably going to kill this team here. Let's be real. I mean... Uh, I don't know, dude. It's crazy. We're going to be saying this a lot throughout this game because anytime you watch a game winner, you got to understand that, like, it's not in create, like, it's not ungodly lucky to win a game. Like, really, like, people are winning back to back games. People are winning two games a day. People are, you know, winning in top three the rest of the day. So it's not, like not impossible, but like, there is the winner's, winner's perspective is a little bit crazier. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure if we watch all of Peter Boss games, all 12 of their games, we would see a lot of like, wow, this guy really just didn't build or like, this looks like insanely easy. Um, or this is, you know, this guy's running right next to Peter Bot and he just gets a quick one pump and gets five, five, five. It's like, yeah, like that, that kind of just happened right here. They're, they're about to just wipe out this guy instantly because for some reason his route and they didn't spot them. His route was literally perfect to Booga. So quick kill, double tacking him. Now they're going to go for this last... Go for the finish, go up and fight this guy. There you go. Game number one, they pick up on a they pick up some two kills off of a of a pretty drone team. They actually keep the burst. One DMR, one burst. Hmm. I guess it has a laser on it, so it's not too not too too bad. And they pull zones. So everything's going in their hands. Like they, 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 they've got it. They got kills, they got surge, they got DMRs with the scope now, one of them does. And, and they pulled zone. 
So now I think their game plan truly, I think it's going to just switch from like having to, you know, sit on hills and try to trade people to let's try to find that third party. Like I think they're going to probably beef with the team that's over here. Noxie and Chris probably beef with some of these teams. We'll see here in a second though. Yeah, it looks like they spot out Noxie and Chris. And if you've never played Classy before, this is one of the most insane like roofs I've se ever seen in the game. Like it's uh, it's pretty simple. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a it's a roof. But like the way that this POI is set up and the angles that this gives you, and you know, Crisp and Noxie literally have no idea that, or they they should they could have no idea that they're there. Right? Like you had you would have no clue. So sit on the roof. We get a couple tags. Probably gonna go back to the old loot, or yeah, go go to train station for for extra heals. Smart. I mean, they have great surge, so their goal really is is to be center. They should be going dead center here. They have a lot, a lot of tags. They just got another what 150 off of that. Yeah, so they go to a pretty center spot, elevated. They pull the zone again. They probably go for island here if I was to assume correctly. Just because they have the jump on it. They're the first ones there. They can control it. Who knows? Maybe maybe not. No, they actually don't. This team looks like we got Poffy and Source. Bad and Booga. But they're in a great spot. I mean, they pulled, they pulled a phenomenal zone. We are going to skip a little bit here because there's really not much to watch. They're just tagging people. And they're doing it right. I mean, they're sitting in a base. They're editing through windows. They're, you know, like all oh, that's what we want to see. Next zone goes because they're elevated, right? I mean, we're kind of pre-firing it, but also hearing it at the same time. Like they're going to crash pad, right? But because they're elevated, it makes it so much easier. Now they can just fizz crash pad straight to zone. They really could have just ran this. I honestly probably would have just popped nitro and ran it, to be honest. I would have popped nitro, got to this bush. Let's, let's not, hey, we're not here to figure out what I would have done. We're here to watch Booga and Aviv. Come on now. Both work though. At the end of the day, it's fine. You're going pretty much the same distance. You're just using utility for either of them. Either way, end goal for both of us, for everybody in this position, would be to just go as soon as you can, go to refarm. That's what they're doing. They're just farming it up. Sitting, gonna build a base with extra refarm. I think it is kind of smart though. Um, and again, this, this could be just be like straight luck. Like I'm not, I'm not going to say it's not luck. I'm not going to say it is luck because at the end of the day, Booga is a very smart player. Aviv is a very smart player. They could be doing this intentionally, but it is pretty smart in my opinion to be going for this building because of the amount of mats that are here, there are a ton of mats and you can seep through and get a bunch more. Like if you really need mats, you can go up here and get this. You know, there's, there's a big pot there. You can always come in here and farm this, the roof, you know, this. Right? Versus, like, imagine they were to go here. Like, yes, technically, they would maybe be closer to the edge. But, like, there's a there's, there's, there's a good amount of refarm here. But there's a lot, it's a lot more exposed, right? Like, here is a pretty, this is pretty safe. Like, nobody's really going to be below you. You could even come down here and farm. Like, there's a lot more safe space than, like, you know, imagine a team base is here. And now you're, like, you know, you're playing cautious between the buildings. Again, I don't think, I don't think they had thought about it like that. But it is a good spot to sit. I think, really, they probably just went for the most center refarm spot. Um, and maybe the biggest the biggest choice was to go here was because they, you know if the zone pulls in any direction they have a pretty easy rotate. Like you know imagine there's a team that goes here this team has to now wait for Buga to go if it pulls that direction versus if you're if you're dead center you know any direction you can pretty much go. So they try to get as center as possible. Again just speculation just throwing out my just throwing out my two cents. But a game one win is no it's no joke, man. Game one win is no joke. So they go insta, which is the right play. Just go right away. Now they crash pad, it looks like. Yep. It is crash pad. Oh, wow, they actually they tarp up for Oh, they maybe they see this is happening. It's a lot of mats. Good golly Pete. Whew. Oh wow, yeah, okay. I get that. No way, no way. Ah, oh, they found him. 
They're always gonna find him. Aviv's got that thing on him. I'm kidding. Um. Yeah, they're going crazy right now. This is a lot of refresh. This is a, this is this is a lot of mats here. I was about to say they got a crash foot out of that. That's a big, big spray right there. I mean, they didn't really need that to be honest. They played the game perfect to this point. But you're gonna take it every time. You're gonna take that like that extra refresh every time. Ends up putting them in a position for a better pull for the next zone. They're at least out of that edge. And now they get to go. I mean, this still is not like if you're looking at this position right now, if we were to just freeze frame it and say that this team out of all the teams here, it was Booga and Aviv to win this game, you would say this is kind of nuts. Like you would think maybe, you know, Paper and Victor V, Clicks and Vino, Yamzo, like, you know, Rapid. Like there's a lot more. There's a lot other a lot of other teams that really could come out and win it from this position. You know, being that it's pulls up to the hill, you even maybe could say like this top team. I don't know who this is, but Bonnie and Yapko, like they could be the ones to win this game. So we're, we're going to see a pretty crazy Pretty crazy, pretty, pretty crazy game here. Holy shit. Kind of slow it down a little bit as we get closer to the end game. But they are in zone here on the edge, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I right? Let's see. Yeah, they're very close to the being in. So their path was they would go, they came from here. They crash padded over, went to here, ran up because they had timing, and then got to here, right? So, not too bad. But they're still kind of buried, right? This is not, not, not too great. Let's see what they do here. And yeah, they, they are close to being in, but not all the way in. And these hill zones are notorious for, you know, thinking that you're in, but you're not actually in. So you got to be really careful here. Make sure you actually have a good amount of space in zone here, because... Not only are you going to get pinched by the zone, but you're also going to get pinched by the players above, by the people, you know, more people coming in below you, trying to squeeze in right below you. Hill zones are a mess, man. So I'm actually really shocked that they, they did win this game. You would think it's always on, on these type of zones, especially in a game one of FNCS. You would think that it would be one of these teams right here to win the game or like, you know, one of these teams just because they're in such a far, you know, better position. They're just they just are. Uh, and again, especially being that it's a game one. I mean, if we go around, I know we're going to watch Boogie here in the, at the end of the day, but if we go around to some team's mats, I mean, we've got Agers and Rise on 23. He obviously hit Rise is dead. We got Dukes and Sphinx on pretty solid mats. Nothing crazy though, like 89, 90. Like that's, that's good, but it's not like insane. You got Taysen and Yamzo, a great team on, on 30, 30. You know, we got a solo here. Like you can see the burn is, can be a lot. Uh, Paper Victor V on 90, 95. It's like, yeah, that, that's still good builds overall, but it, it's it's not easy, man. It's not easy. You're not always going to play every game with 5-5-5. Five, five, five. So they have a lot of mats, Booga and Aviv, and they get, looks like they get a, more, a couple more here, but this is the zone that is really going to drain your mats. I mean, they're golden, dude. They're 1,000, 1,000 for mats. More than that. Insane. And, okay, and Aviv's got the Deagle. I don't know if you guys have heard or seen Aviv with the Deagle, seen what he can do with it, but this guy is, is if this Deagle is still in the game, or if something like this is still in the game during Globals, I have no doubt that Aviv and Buga would not top three. Like, that isn't, like, Aviv, if you give him this, we're about to see some crazy things. He's going to go nuts. Like, I already know. So next zone pulls, right? Continuing forward, right? Next zone pulls. It goes kind of what like north here right so it goes kind of on the hill kind of down the hill it's a very awkward zone but they actually get a pretty solid pull like imagine it pulled opposite like way over here it would be nuts right so everyone actually kind of gets bailed out gets a little yeah a little bit of a bailout um so we'll see what he does here here's some guys fighting probably needing some surge because they're already chilling now they're five 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 on the dot okay this game is shaping up to under i'm understanding why they won this game this is a lot of mats so they found their crash pad spot. That's all you need to do. Just clear out a certain amount of space, you know, obviously to be able to go in a direction. And they're going to timing it, you know, wait for certain teams to go by them or maybe go super late. As for the timing of this, like really because it's a crash pad, because you're in full butt metal, like no one really knows you're going to do it. I don't even know if Acorn and them would have known that Boog and them were going to go. It's such a hard thing to predict when you're in metal. When you're not making edits, you know, like, it's hard to know, so. Anyways, they go. 
So, so I, I'm saying that to say that the timing of it doesn't really matter. Like they could have gone any time and they really wanted to, and it would have been fine. Um, and it's a hill zone, so it's not like they're flying into like, like you know, an open low ground space like this. Imagine it was just like across here, right? If you were to go super late on that, you could definitely see how that could affect you. But here, it doesn't really matter. Like go early or late, they're just more so waiting for the zone to expand and trying not to go at the same exact timing as someone on them, or trying not to go as somebody runs on top of their head. That's the timing they're looking for. And they did that, right? That was that was that was good. All right, so next zone pulls here, right? It pulls what this way? Ah, uh, down. Sorry, down. My bad. It's, I don't know why it's hard for me to read the map right now. It's like I can't see where the players are. Anyways, it pulls down here, right? Pulls to this house. So they get the first zone pulled, pretty much, right? Like it's they're one of the best teams in the best position, or they are. Yeah, they are one of the best positioned teams, I should say. So they're just gonna be looking down, doing this. It's typical, right? And then crash pad off or nitro off. Pop nitro crash pad. Boom. Sling it. Land. When they land, they kind of try to land on a side of, of zone here, right? Like, they, they definitely don't land in the dead center where, like, Paper and Victor VR. They're trying to pick a side. And they do that. So now they're going to carpet left side here. Kind of stay out of the mess. Let everyone else fight for surge. Fight for being shambles mats. I mean, now we can really see how much mats they, they really have, right? 82, 82. You know, that's what they've got. If we go around the lobby, 68, 63. Uh, they just got to refresh as, as well. We got Kwani and Yapko who pulled the zone, right? So I wouldn't even count that. They, they, they've obviously been playing a little bit easier than others. We've got Poffy who's a solo, two builds, Chance and, and Chaos, which I think they actually landed at this spot. Like, literally, they landed right where they are right now. And they're at 30 builds each. Muzz and Epic Will, great team, very smart team, a qualified team at that. 44 and 50 builds. It's like, you can really see Rapid and Batman Booga, 30 and 20, like, Clicks, uh, Clicks and Vino at 15 each. Like, you guys can see how many mats, like, how much the way they've played is going to set them up for the win. Like, they're going to almost guarantee the win if you get, if you have a thousand mats going into first moving, you're, you're like, almost guaranteeing that yourself the win. Like, it's impossible for you to not to not win. Really, it's it's very very hard for you to throw that. Other teams would have to have equally as good refreshes. Actually, one team I don't see in this lobby is Peterbot. I guess he didn't have a good game one, huh? Hmm. Let's see it though. So they got a lot of mats. They don't really need to go anything or go for anything, and they might honestly because the way this lobby's playing, Acorns on height. I would imagine that they're going to look at height. They have enough mats to look at height for sure. There's a gnat in here. Like they're going to crash it up for it. They're going to they're going to do something. They're going to deagle headshot. I think they they would be very stupid to not go for high ground here um with the mats they have. Like simply put, if they were to just tarp out the mid mid ground, they would just put in the, put themselves in a position that could be less advantageous than just being on height, right? But they're they're playing the patient game, right? They're not going to send it. They're a very smart team. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I've seen them in a very like aggressive position ever. Like not even in the other games that I've seen them win. They're a very smart, patient team. So here I'm I'm just going to pre-fire. I think they're going to crash right up the hill. It would make a lot of sense for them to kind of tarp out into this, into this dead space. But they know they need to go up. So okay, they just nitro up. Same thing. They gotta get up the hill. They they gotta change layers. They see that it goes up the hill. They see that there's people building up into them. And they they literally just ramp up and take height. That's all it is. They ramp up and they take height because Acorn and Cold just got griefed. I just wanna see from who, because how could you grief height but not also take height? So they, it looks like maybe Alex and Worthy looked up and griefed it. Something happened here. Let's just take a look real quick. So they have height. Not a lot of builds left.
they cone themselves on height. And then looks like they chopped themselves out and build up. Yeah, so they just simply had, they just had, they just went for height with not a lot of mats. They probably could have extended this game. And I feel like Acorn would have, actually, I don't know. I mean, really, they're, they're a really good team and a really aggressive team. I would imagine they probably wish they extended it a bit more. Uh, but at the same time, like, you do got to do big things to do well. Anyways, back to Booga and Aviv. They literally just take height for free. Like, nobody has it because nobody has the mats they have. Now you've got Aviv and Booga on height. After Aviv splits mats, they've got 30-30 each, right? A crazy amount of mats still. And, I mean, now it's just going to be spray, put pressure down on everyone else who has not a lot of builds. I mean, we, we can go through this lobby again really quickly just to kind of, so we can get an understanding of how stacked people really are. We've got Booga and Aviv on height with 30 and 30, okay? We've got Bolts 18 and 0, Virgo 32 and 43, so they're really stacked. Vino clicks 10 and 10, Muzz Epic Whale probably the same thing, 10 and 10, okay, 48 and 17, that's pretty solid. Batman Booga 0 and 5, like people have got nothing, like Pars is a solo with 0 builds. Uh, I don't know if we went through Quan already, but 57 and 15, like they're pretty stacked. You got Tony as a solo, so like this is grand, right? Like a couple teams are really stacked, that's it. Everyone else is 10 builds or less. You just got you just got the massive spray, right? They're gonna keep spraying, keep doing pressure. They finally get chopped out, but they still have a good amount of builds. Five or so each. That was their first ever pressure of the entire game on height. I don't know who it was, because it's not really the biggest deal. They they still held it, but looks like somebody tried shooting them out and crash fighting up at the same time. But again, because everyone's so shambles, Kwani with zero builds, Yapko with zero builds, Muzz and Epic Will. 25 builds as a solo. Muzz. On 50 HP. So this is this is just this is the winner here. This is as easy as it gets. Really. They drop down, Muzz fights, Muzz ends up trading 1v1 or 2v1. Now it's just GG's. So really what we could take from that game was because of the surge strategy that, that was changed with Cactus, um, and then not going center, because before this, I I've watched them play before this cactus nerf. They would go to the cactus, you know, center map, fight for surge over there, then come, you know, then play how everyone else would play. But because of that, and on top of on top of the cactus nerf and the fact that they didn't get DMRs off spawn, they were able to use their drop map knowledge, knowing the teams that landed 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 near them, and just go pick off an easy team. We watched that fight. That team has no hands, static and floto. If you're watching this, you are some booty. You are some straight ass. Um, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> going through this though. That's, I mean, really, they they just they just outplayed a team that was worse than them, and that was their big surge. And then they continued to kind of poke around the POI. They got those tags on Crisp and Noxy. Then they worked their way through the end game, and they just simply crash padded every single time. Crash pad, fizz. Crash pad, fizz. Crash pad, fizz. Pop a nitro at the same time, so you can run after. All right, they just kept doing that, and eventually, uh, based off the positions that they were in and a, and a couple lucky refreshes, I would say like the refresh that Aviv got. Back somewhere over here. I believe it was maybe like around here. The refresh that he got over here was insane. Like he, they were able to have a thousand mats going into the first moving, which took them to here. And then obviously they went down with still a thousand mats. So like that's 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 game winning right there. They're going to win that every time. You could put any team in that position with those mats and they're going to win every time. Doesn't matter. You could put the worst team in the lobby. You could put Statics and Floto in the same position as Buga and Aviv and they would win that. Like... 100%, if you have that many mats going in endgame of game one grand finals, you're going to win. Um, maybe even of any game. Um, so that's what we can take from this video, from this little from this little game breakdown. I'm going to hop into the next game two winner. We're going to keep going down the list. So stay tuned.